Good morning. Welcome to United Methodist Church of Plano. I'm actually inside what we call our stage area. I'm just going to give you a heads up right away. Tomorrow's daily devotion has already been pre-recorded. So I do have more than just this one shirt. So you'll see me in the same shirt in the same location two days in a row. Uh, many of you know that Vicki will be having surgery tomorrow. So uh, I'll be in the hospital all day. In fact, I'll probably be spending the night there with her. So I pre-recorded tomorrow's message already. That should be ready to go for all of you. Today I'm going to be talking about praying for our nation. Hey Mike, good morning. And to tomorrow's message that I already recorded is, uh, is about salvation. It's about us taking a look again and, and, and kind of peeling back uh, some of the, the tension and the crisis that we're in the middle of in, uh, in our nation and, and focus again on, on sharing the message of the gospel. So, hey, Edna, good morning. Uh, thanks, Mike. So, I've been impressed by the Holy Spirit that um, we need to get back to, not that any of you left, but uh, we need to talk again about the importance of prayer and uh, praying for our nation. You know, a lot of us can get caught up in, uh, thanks, Edna, uh, we can get caught up in the what's going on around us we can get caught up in the anger and bitterness we can be angry at politicians we can be disagreeing with fellow christians and 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 fellow human beings and what we should do and how things should happen hey arlene hey norris but i think for christians we need to we need to set all that aside not that it's not important i'm not saying forget anything i'm not saying pretend nothing's happening but what i'm saying is we need to set our own agendas aside, and maybe you've done this already, and, and clear all that stuff away. And we need to be on our knees, if we can kneel, on our face, in our chairs, walking, driving. We need to be in prayer for our nation. We need to set aside our personal feelings about whatever's going on. We need to set aside with who we agree with, who we don't agree with, and what we need to do as a nation, as a nation of believers, those who are called by Christ, we need to pray continually for our nation. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Larry. And I'm not saying that, that, that many of you don't. I know many of you pray often. But I thought it was important, again, for us to, to address this issue of prayer. And I believe that we, we can pray specifically for a, a number of things. Number one, I would suggest that we can pray for a change in our own heart. For us to be led by God and not by our feelings, our opinions, or our desires. But that we would be people who would respond in situations led by Christ. In fact... That's what we should be doing all the time. See, Christ sacrificed on the cross. His death, his, his horrific death, his burial and his resurrection purchased us, purchased our salvation and gave us a seat at the banquet table in heaven. Therefore, we of all people should be doing the work inside the to, to clear out the junk, make room for Christ. Again, I'm not saying have rose-colored colored, rose, yes, I can say it, rose-colored col glasses, pardon me for tripping over my own tongue. I'm not saying pretend that everything's okay. And I'm not saying that we should pretend that everything we think is wrong. My focus is, is that, we, that we pray for ourselves and I think we can specifically, because we know that Lord God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the one who came in human flesh, can make a difference. We know God is able, and we know none of this took him by surprise. Therefore, we should and can bring our nation, every aspect of our nation, to the Lord. 
I want to give you a couple examples. This is from Psalm chapter 6. Psalm chapter 6, verse 9. This happens to be out of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. The Lord has heard my plea for help. The Lord accepts my prayer. You know, we don't have to have long, complicated prayers. We can cry out for help, and we can cry out for help for our nation. When Peter, full of faith, when Jesus called him out of the boat, he walked on water. He got distracted and started to sink. He said, Lord, help me. He didn't say, I'm going to pray for a few minutes as I'm heading down. No. Lord, help me. You can begin praying for the nation by saying, Lord, help us. We are in desperate need of your grace, your mercy, and your healing. I want to read for you a, a passage from Romans 12, 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says this. Rejoice in hope. Friends, we have hope in Christ. No matter how scary, no matter how dark the day, we can rejoice in hope. And I know there are many Christians around the world who suffer persecution and somehow, some way, rejoice in the hope of the Lord for their salvation to help them endure physical torture, murder, you name it. Paul, who was persecuted, wrote this. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. First, first Thessalonians, actually let's do uh, Colossians first. Colossians chapter 4. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it, with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us that God may open us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ, account of which I am a prisoner. This is Paul speaking. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it. Man, being watchful. We're watching over our nation. And we're joining together at different times across the, across the nation, praying for our nation. He goes on to say in Colossians 4, verse 5, Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of time. Verse 6, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. When we come in contact with people, whether they're saved or unsaved, whether they know Jesus or don't know Jesus, we need to check our speech before we engage our speaking. First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18 says this, Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19 says, don't quench the spirit. Now, I could run through the Bible, read through the Psalms, read through First and Second Kings. You can read uh, David's prayers. Uh, look at Daniel. Daniel specifically cries out for the nation of Israel. He even repents and, and calls God to forgive the nation for the way they have sinned and brought this deportation to Babylon and, and having this oppressor come into their land. David does battle on his knees for his nation. And I believe that we as a nation of believers, those who follow Jesus Christ, who've been bought by his blood, are being called on by Christ to do battle for our nation 
Not with sharp words. Not with antagonistic phrases. Not by attacking our politicians or people we disagree with. That we are called to battle for the soul of our nation through prayer. That is the weapon of the Christian. That is where we will see real healing, real change, and real people being saved by Christ as Christians around this nation, whether we know each other or not, at 24 hours a day, are bombarding heaven on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our national leaders, whether we like them or not. On, the behalf, on behalf of our state leaders, whether we like them or not, agree with them or not, it doesn't matter. Our local leaders, we are to be praying for the soul of our nation and not just our leaders. Not just our political leaders, but community leaders, faith leaders. We're to be calling on God for the soul of our nation for us as individuals. That the love of Christ truly, truly would sweep across this nation. And that God will bring us to a point where we can interact once again with one another. Where divisions are broken down. We live sometimes divided. And I've said it before. God has brought this nation through some horrific, terrible times. And I believe that if people called by Christ, bought by his blood, will do battle in the heavenly places, in the heavenly realm, on behalf of our nation, God will do a mighty work of redemption and reconciliation through grace. I believe one day if we continue to turn our face to God, he will relent, have mercy on us, and bring us anew. But friends, I want to call you, if you haven't already, or if you struggle with it, look, the beautiful thing about Jesus is we don't have to be well-spoken. And Jesus speaks every language on the planet. So it doesn't matter what language we pray in. It doesn't matter what part of the world you might be watching in. It doesn't matter. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't have to be theologians. We don't have to be biblical, biblical scholars. Pray as the person God created you to pray. And battle for the soul of our nation. Now things may get worse before they get better. So don't lose hope. Don't lose hope in prayer. There is nothing more powerful than the prayer of God's people. So my friends, I, I hope that, that you don't feel like I'm, I'm poking us in the chest because uh, it's not like I have a perfect prayer life either. I have to practice what I preach. Sometimes I forget about praying for our nation and for our political leaders. So I'm calling all of us, including me, to be mindful, to bombard heaven on behalf of our nation. Asking God that he would bring peace, that he would bring justice, that he would bring redemption and reconciliation, and that he would protect our political leaders from physical harm, that he would give them wisdom to lead our communities, our states, and our nation in a godly manner. He can do it even if they're not believers. 
When we take him at his word and say, Lord, do this. Rescue our nation. He will answer. With that, let's pray, and then we'll close up. Lord Jesus, help us to live what we say we believe. We believe that you answer prayer. We believe that you are all-powerful. We believe that you are the sovereign creator of the universe. We believe that we are precious creations of yours. That every human being from Adam until the baby just born today is precious in your sight and made in your image. We know you are heartbroken at what is going on in our nation today. As we battle a virus and as we battle racism and violence and fear. So today, Lord, we are going to cry out to you specifically that you would glorify yourself by bringing incredible, radical, unforeseen reconciliation to this nation. Only you could do it, Jesus, for we are hopeless without you. Forgive us for the way we speak to one another. Forgive us for the things that we say. Change our hearts. Mold us into Christ-like prayer warriors. That you would be glorified here in America because of the great work you will do. Thank you that you haven't forsaken us. Thank you that you haven't forgotten us. And thank you that we have access to the throne of grace through Christ. We pray all of this, Father, for Jesus' sake and in his name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Evelyn, good morning. Good to see you. Hello, my friends. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow, but uh, I hope this message on evangelism for tomorrow uh, speaks to your heart and ignites a flame. I'm looking forward to being back and seeing all of you on Sunday, either on live stream or here in person at 10 o'clock. But until then, may the power of Christ overwhelm you. May his love overshadow you. And may you feel his arms tangibly holding you today and every day. Go in Christ's peace. He is the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. See you Sunday.